All right, what's going on everybody? So this is my first impressions for The Evil Within 2. So I'm about five hours in and I've mostly done uh, mainly just side missions, running around, uh, collecting upgrades, pretty much farming, right? Because I am playing on the on the hardest difficulty, which is Nightmare. Um, there's only three, diffi three difficulties, so I, I assume Nightmare is pretty much just hard. It, it doesn't seem like very hard to me. I hope there's another difficulty that you unlock after you beat the game on the hardest difficulty because I would like that. So, The Evil Within 2. So, I was a huge fan of the first one. I, I, I love the first one. I think that game is highly underrated. If you haven't played the first one, I think you should definitely play it. Um, it did have many issues, uh, pretty much. I think The Evil Within, the first game, was pretty much like kind of like a proof of concept. They had to, you know, prove that the game... Uh, had potential and that people would be interested in it right and now this game obviously has a bigger budget they were able to expand it more and it's improved in practically every way so the story of evil within 2 is not very original it's more they pretty much what they did is they use the very the overused plot line of the main uh, protagonist's daughter has been kidnapped and now he's got a saver. <laughs> I mean, how many movies, how many video games have we seen that plot line? My daughters, my, my, my wife has been killed or my wife has been kidnapped, my daughter, my children, my family, somebody in my fam family been kidnapped, gotta go save them. So they use that plot to pretty much force the main character, Sebastian Castellano, to go back into this virtual horror world, which uh, you're brought to by the Mobius. The Mobius, is a company and they have this device similar to how uh, it is in the Matrix or the Animus in Assassin's Creed where you lay down, they hook you up and you're transported to a different world. And his daughter has been kidnapped and put into this virtual world so that's why he's got to go back in. The company who's uh, put him, uh, forcing him to go back into this world obviously have their, their own interest uh, for wanting him to go in there but obviously he's doing it to save his daughter and that's pretty much the story so nothing original nothing great there uh, visual wise it is a, an improvement over the first game but nothing to write home about it is a cleaner more crisp image I played the first one on PC even on PC that game didn't look great um, this one is improved seemingly in every area for the most part it could look better but it's it's passable right um, I do think that this game could have used a little bit more, like maybe six more months of some technical uh, polish and optimization, because it doesn't it, it doesn't run bad. Make sure you down. I had to make sure I da downloaded my drivers. After I downloaded the drivers, it did start to run a little bit better. But it did seem like yeah, this could have used a li just a little bit more optimization. I'm sure they're going to release some patches for it to run better and some technical things. Some some technical issues ha happen. Uh, such as getting stuck on uh, the the geometry and the uh, and the, and the environment, you know, getting stuck, getting hitched, uh, enemies kind of you know glitching and bugging out. Those things happen sometimes. Um, but you know, you expect that from any game that has anything to do with Tango Works or or Bethesda, honestly. Um, but overall, I'm I'm loving the game. Um, like I said, I'm so I'm playing on the hardest difficulty. Uh, this is a survival horror game. The pretty much the way you have to play this game, especially on the hardest difficulty, is you have to, it's a lot of ammo and resource management. The gameplay, honestly, is, is pretty much how you would have to play The Last of Us or another survival uh, game um, on the hardest difficulty. You know, I consider this game, you know, more of a spiritual successor to, like, uh, the some of the Resident Evil games, right? I consider it a spiritual successor, so that's kind of... How you, how you gotta play a lot, it gotta be very conservative and really depend on melee and sneak attacks, uh, stealth kills rather, uh, but they call it sneak attacks in the game, to take down the normal enemies. Because if you're using your weapons, your ammo, which it, which are scarce to take down normal enemies most of the time, then you know, you're gonna be in trouble later on. I can probably say there is only, only if there's like a, a huge group of enemies um, or, or it's a stronger a uh, more powerful enemy powerful enemy is when I've used actual weapons. Other than that, I'm um, saving my resources because that's kind of how you gotta you got to play. You got to play 
stealthily, at least if you're playing on Nightmare. I don't know about, uh, I think they call it, the other difficulty is casual, and then there's a medium difficulty, but um, even on those, I highly recommend the way you have to play is pretty much relying on stealth, sneak attacks, because sneak attacks are pretty much one-hit kills, um, and just saving your ammo and your resources, only using them when absolutely needed. Other than that, you have the other main three things uh, that you need to focus on, which are uh, crafting, um, your skill tree upgrades, and your weapon upgrades. Now, crap, you can craft on the fly, meaning outside, or you can craft at the safe houses, right? Um, or the workbenches. There's workbenches around around the hub world because this game is not linear like the original Evil Within. Um, it's it's not open world, but it's hub world, right? So you can craft on the fly, but crafting on the fly uh, uses more resources than going to a workbench or going to a safe house and crafting. So you should pretty much never craft on the fly unless it's an absolute emergency. Um, when you kill enemies, they drop some resources and items. Um, most of the time they drop green kool-aid i call it green kool-aid and the green kool-aid is what you use to uh, to uh upgrade your um your skill tree right skill tree moves and those can make the game obvious those are very important so it's very important to actually kill as much i pretty much kill every enemy i see but i obviously like i said i do it without using bullets because you want to save those but you still need the green kool-aid to upgrade your abilities the abilities uh are in this game are very important they help out a lot with dealing with different enemies dispatching you know increase your health your stamina uh you know crouch movement all of those things um very important uh so like i said there's hub worlds there's some side missions um that i highly recommend you do uh to help you out and it's only going to help you out in the long run i've come across several different enemy types so far uh, I do think this game took a little bit of uh, inspiration from, um, as far as the enemy types go, uh, from like Left 4 Dead and also uh, Last of Us, in my opinion, um, and definitely Resident Evil. I think the enemy types come from all of those different types of games. Um, another thing is the AI uh, in this game. So stealth is very important, and it, it can almost be overpowered in this game, but I think they made it OP by design. And what I mean by that is pretty much... Um, as these enemies are are designed that when you break line of sight with them they completely lose track of you for the most part and don't know where you are like let's say an enemy is chasing me if i hide behind a car and, and the enemy is on the other side of the car uh they have no idea they have you know lose track of where i am or even if you go in a bush and let's say that enemy is like kind of still looking they saw you go into the bush they can still, if it's like a group of bushes, they'll still lose track of you. So it's very easily to manipulate and uh, like over overcome the enemies um, in this game because you can just easily outsmart them. So I don't think that's necessarily stupid AI, even though they're kind of stupid. But I think it's by design because they the developers knew like it, because this is a survival game, they need they have to give the player a way. Uh, kind of easier way to use the stealth stealth and melee system and not have to always uh use their weapons and, and their guns so um to me that's why the nightmare difficulty is not so difficult is be if you if you really take advantage of the stealth system use bushes break line of sight all the time you the only challenge is is pretty much the stronger enemies but the typical normal grunts they're easily dispatched, but you have to do, you know, be patient, stealth, uh, upgrade the right skill trees to help your stealth, uh, your, you know, your stamina, your health, all of those things, and you know, you can overcome the AI. So, uh, pretty much, yeah. Like I said, I'm loving the game so far. I love the first one, so I ex expected to love this one. Um, I highly recommend it uh, if you like this this style of game. I, I think it's great. So. Yeah, th those are my first impressions. Um, I think this is probably going to be one of my favorite games of the year. Uh, it, it is. It is. I can say it's going to be one of my favorite games of the year. I can already say that. So, yeah, those are my first impressions. Thank you all for watching. I'm out of here. Peace.